Okay, Ymod.com. I said I would do a video showing how the advanced authenticator has been coming along um, some days ago, but never actually got the chance. So here we go. The editor, basically the same as the um, Expression 2 editor, and HTML code. Although I'll get back to this script in a moment. As you can see, following general XML spec. Um, I haven't formalized it yet, so some of this might change. And the errors to the right of my screen, like that, are because I'm evaluating the code as I'm writing it. So, of course, if I'm halfway through writing something, I get a lot of errors. Whoops, and I've positioned that completely the wrong place. There we go. 1100, circle, radius 40. And we have it any radius we like, 30, 20, so on and so forth. Now, um, all of the tags in HML um, are context based, so their uh, origin coordinates are based on their parent's origin. HML is um, the screen, so the origin in the top right hand corner for that. But if I open this program, yeah. then we can see we've got one rectangle in HML as defined there, um, and another one inside it, this white one, um, at 100 100, but because it's inside the larger rectangle it ends at 100 100 from that, um, from the corner of the previous one. Um, just to show how that would work if I take that outside and put it there, we end up with it up there. There we go. The colours at the moment can be defined in a number of ways. We've got um, anything in curly braces is a, a collection of some sort, usually a vector, but in this case a colour. Um, and this is red, uh, green and blue in the usual format, to 235 and an optional fourth for alpha, so we can have 50% or whatever we like. I've also got a long list of um, various colours that might or might not be useful to you, such as green, so we can have a green one, or we could have lime. Um, in addition, they can have uh, a two-digit combination at the end, which specifies the alpha, so we can have 25% or 50% or 75% just to save writing out and remembering all the colours. Um, I'll probably write more but there we go. Um, now all these positions as marked by start and end over there are currently two-dimensional but as soon as we add a third dimension so if I set this to naught, 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 like that, the top left hand corner here is specified now by a world coordinate. So if I just save this and wander about, we can see that the box changes based on where I'm looking. Um, if any of the child elements leave the parent's bounds, they aren't drawn. So we can see if I bring this far enough across that it leaves the left hand side of the screen, it stops being drawn. Similarly, if I make the box shorter than um, the space that the white box should be in, it hides the white box. Um, this is just to cut down on having lots and lots of things drawn off screen and being processed even though you can't see them. And just shows the update rate. Nah, flail around a bit. If I bring the editor back up, let's have something a little more interesting there. The original target marker from Advanced Head 1 is back. If I get to the origin, whoop, there we go. And takes a new set of parameters, you can easily define it. I've got its box, this might change, I'm not sure what really to call these. We can have a normal type as well. Unfortunately, I've just put the editor on top of it, but there we go. So, normal type, size 40, 
20 freaking massive you get the idea and it's locked at position not 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 so the origin of the world um, again we can also have this at a screen coordinate I have a knack for putting it behind that. There we go. And we can change the colour to anything we like. You can have it as black, or it's very transparent. And there we go. We can have it boxed again. And so and so forth. And that's about it. That shows the general idea of what has been going on. Sorry for the delay.